This video was sponsored by Creality. I've completely ran out of space. I have nothing left and it's really bogging me down to the point where it's super difficult to actually film the videos. So this is the talking head setup area, but this is three and a half meters by three and a half meters. And this room is four meters by four meters. And there's this massive housing crisis going on in the Netherlands right now. And in other countries as well, like it's super difficult to actually get a space, like it rents a space. Now it's not like I don't appreciate my apartment because I really like that it's exactly two 40 foot high cube containers wide and long. So I've always had this dream of like wanting to build kind of a minimalist house out of shipping containers. So what I've come down to is I want to build my way out of this situation. And I think that's a little, a little bit of a trap that I fall into sometimes where I feel like, okay, but if I build this setup that I will optimize it to such an extent and then we'll have more room. That doesn't always. I took to the CAD and I started designing the ultimate fabrication desk setup, which was way too big. Like I wanted to implement every single tool that I had into this one setup and it would turn out to be two meters 50 by 160 centimeters. And that setup is super awesome because it has all of the cameras integrated as well. I would be able to do live streams and I'm really excited for the future of that, but it's just not feasible at this moment in time because it's way too big. Eventually after testing out a bunch of designs, I came to the conclusion that we just need to optimize it to a very extreme extent so that it can be hyper compact. The Creality reached out a little while ago. They offered to send me the Samoon S1, which is a really awesome 3D scanner. And it's really great at scanning large objects I found. So I'm basically utilizing this to 3D scan all of the components that I want to integrate into this thing. And that allows us to make very minor adjustments to the entire setup, which just makes it work a lot better than it normally would. So one of the first tools we're actually implementing into this is the XTOR S1. And the XTOR S1 is a really awesome laser cutter. It has a 40 watt module in there, so it can cut through wood and other types of materials that we might need for the project. I use this mainly on smaller projects because the work surface is a little bit smaller than I'm used to. The Samoon S1 really comes in handy here because it has the cross laser line pattern and some additional depth sensors. And I noticed that it's super quick in scanning stuff with that cross laser line pattern. So that's really neat for large objects like this. But we implemented the 3D scan of the XTOR S1 on the bottom plate. And that's mostly because we don't have room at the top plate, right? That's work surface. The concern I have with the placement right now is that tools might drop from the top and land on the shield which protects your eyes from going blind. But I've never really had a tool like defy gravity and just bend inwards when it's dropping so I think this will be okay. We could add some additional cabinet doors if we want to. Now one of the reasons that we're actually going for the XTOR S1 over here is that it was sponsored for the channel so I didn't have to pay for it but also because it came with the air purification system and the air purification system is super useful in apartments where Maybe you don't have space next to a window to actually pump the fumes outside, right? Uh, we need to 3D model a custom bracket for the end over here so the air purification tube doesn't stick out too much because currently it does. So far we've been using the cross laser line pattern on the Samoon S1 but it comes with a bunch of different scanning modes, right? So you have infrared mode scanning as well where you don't need markers at all but it is a little bit difficult to keep track of objects and I have had a lot of times where it just glitches out and that kind of stuff. In, so I prefer the laser line method, but there's different laser line methods that you can choose from. So we chose the cross laser line pattern. That's really great for quick scans. But then we also have the single line method, which we're using right here to scan the backside of the X2 S1. And that allows it to scan a little bit deeper. So we can get a much more detailed scan of this rear component over here so that we can model that out later. So the 3D printer that we're integrating is the Bamboo Lab X1C. I had a little bit of trouble actually scanning this one because there's a lot of reflective parts on this thing and I didn't put a whole lot of markers on there. The x 2 s one and the Bamboo Lab X1C fit perfectly next to each other, which is really nice. And something I've been thinking about is how do I optimize it for a small space like this? Like sometimes I need to film something, but the 3D printer is still running in that room, for example, and the noise is going to interfere with the you know, recording session. So how do we deal with that? And a little while ago, I received this massive power bank, I suppose you could call it. And I actually want to utilize this as a kind of a UPS. So every single tool will be connected into that. And if we want to move the setup while it's, for example, 3D printing something or while it's doing something else, we could just unplug it and that should be totally fine. So somebody actually asked me in the comment section to compare the Samoon S1 to the Raptor, which is the 3D scanner that I bought myself. I, I did a little test with this power bank situation, 3D scanned it with the Samoon, and then I 3D scanned it with the Raptor. Now you need to keep in mind that the Raptor only has the parallel lines, right? So what I noticed is it was just a lot easier with the Samoon and it was a lot faster as well. 
So it was, I think, about twice as fast if I compare the clips next to each other. There is a really awesome channel out there. It's called Payo, and he does way more in-depth testing on all kinds of 3D scanners, also from other brands. And I'll leave a link in the description down below to his review of the Samoon S1. Definitely check it out. There's one tool that I've wanted to acquire for quite a long time, and that's a desktop CNC machine. Makara actually reached out a little while ago and offered to send me one, but it was on such a short time frame that I wouldn't be able to make a good video about it. And so, yeah, I wasn't really able to agree to that sponsorship. I wish I had, because it would have fit this setup perfectly. I'm making sure that we have the infrastructure in place to actually accommodate a CNC machine in the future though. So I'm 3D scanning this vacuum and that will just get rid of all the dust and that kind of stuff. So we could put that down there as well. I 3D scanned the FlexiSpot legs that you see over here in a different project. And these are mounted inside of this cube type situation, which is why it looks like a TIE fighter in, in some sense. And this has to do with a video that I saw from Cam a little while ago, where we built this hidden work surface. And it's super nice because we can use all of that verticality to put extra machines up top here, which is space I'd normally never use and still have it be super compact when it's all dropped down into its uh, resting position. So that somewhat does it for the main machines that I'd like to integrate into the setup, but there's a ton of hardware that we need to implement as well, and I'd actually like to plan that before we start laser cutting. Usually I don't really do that. Usually I just use a jigsaw afterwards to implement all kinds of stuff, but yeah, I bought some of these casters which support about a thousand kilograms. I'm not sure if that's each or as a set of four. What I really like about these though is it has this column section which drops down and that will allow the entire setup to be a lot more stable. So when we're 3D printing stuff, usually the setups like wiggle all over the place. I'm hoping that by implementing these casters, that will be reduced quite a lot. Now 3D scanners usually have a lot of difficulty with scanning surfaces which are dark and reflective. And so casters like these with this metallic black shell, which is shining all over the place, is a really like worst case scenario for this 3D scanner. So I'm using the parallel laser line mode here and it's just blasting through it. It has no difficulty whatsoever. Normally you would have to use 3D scanning spray to actually get through this. I'd actually really like to bolt these in place, but I didn't leave enough room in the design itself for that. So in this case, I'm just making some two millimeter holes and we'll just screw them directly into the wooden piece. The next thing are these cable gutters. So these were very expensive for what they are. So they're very thin sheets of metal and I was expecting the build quality to be a lot better. But yeah, I actually 3D scanned the bottom of it and the top of it and in the software it automatically merges these together. And it does a really good job at this as well. The initial idea was to actually implement these into the wooden structure, but because of the build quality, I'm not too sure if I'd like to keep these. And of course we have the project panel implemented over here, but I'm not entirely sure how we're actually going to be mounting this because I'd like it to tilt so that the flexible legs can go down a little bit more and be super easy to you know push back up a little bit so that it looks half decent. So I did order this strange looking drawer opening mechanism and I, I was assuming that there was a spring in there but it's basically a friction system so once you open it then it's very difficult to close again uh, but it is very easy to open which, and it sounds weird. But uh, I basically, I, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to implement this. So I'm, I'm 3D scanning this and I'm leaving this as a problem for later Justin to solve. So if you're enjoying the video so far, then definitely consider subscribing, leaving a like, leaving a comment, checking out the Patreon page. I upload all of the 3D scans and all of the designs over there as well. If you don't subscribe though, you might not get notified of any future build videos. And this is part of a series. So we're doing this, you know, this is episode one where we plan everything out. Episode two, we'll probably use the massive laser cutter to uh, you know build the whole thing and then at the end we'll put everything together in a single video as well and that'll be super awesome so the power plugs and the power buttons will be linked together and i'm thinking of creating a single patch panel input type style situation here so we have the cable running into the power plug and also a switch next to it so we can turn it off but if the you know if the switch breaks then we can always unplug it over there and this has to do with the safety of the whole setup and also you know just power management but we can't really reach the e-stop of the XDOR S1 over there. So this is going to be really essential to have. So 3D scanned the actual turntable for the 3D scanning station as well. And I'd like to implement that one into this draw slide over here. So this is a pretty decent sized draw slide, but it will fit it pretty nicely with all of the pucks attacked. We don't have to take those off or anything. I'm expecting some draw slides later today, which will also 3D scan and immediately make the holes for them in this uh, top panel over here. It was a really fulfilling process to you know, concept this whole setup because there's a lot of hardware I just never used before. And 
Uh, that's strange. Like I, I've never actually used hinges like this before. And these are meant for little cabinets, so they click upwards as well and hold the cabinet in the cabinet door in place. And 3D scan these. Uh, these are also super reflective, but the 3D scanner seems to be doing a pretty decent job of these. It, of course, they're not perfect scans, but we just need measurements of it that are accurate and easy to represent in a CAD. So these hinges will be extremely useful for actually mounting the monitor in some kind of way because they also snap shut. So I've ordered some locks which will be coming in tonight and that will release some of the pressure on those. But in general, I'm not entirely sure about the monitor situation yet because I don't like this wooden sheet. What I have considered is just thinning this one down a little bit. So it's more like a single tube, but then the entire top section is open and I don't really like the look of that either. But again, if you have any ideas for this whole monitor situation, then definitely let me know. Keep in mind it needs to fold flat in some way because otherwise the sit-stand legs can't go lower and that'll be an issue. I think so far we've covered quite a lot of ground with this design and I'm still waiting on some extra components which we'll have to integrate. I can start the laser cutting process on most of these components already though, so definitely let me know in the comment section if you have any ideas, any suggestions. I really appreciate any kind of feedback that you have. Thank you for watching to the end. Hopefully, see you in the next video.